This is Coding Math, Episode 46, Kinematics, Part 4. Today we tackle the reaching part of inverse kinematics. In this case, the base of the system will be fixed, so if the target is too far away, the system will not be able to reach it, but will get as close as it can. As mentioned before, this will require a double pass. The first inverse pass to establish the desired positions, and the second forward pass to set the actual positions. In the first pass, we'll be doing just what we did in dragging. We orient the last arm towards the target and position it so it's just touching. Then we do the same for the arm before that, and all the way back to the base arm. That's the inverse phase. But remember that the base is fixed. We can rotate it, but we can't change its position. So we have to move it back to the base position. Then we go forward again, moving each arm to the end of the previous piece. That's the forward phase. You notice that in this system, even if the system can reach the target, it's most likely going to be a little bit off in the first iteration. But it will self-correct, and we'll make a change that will allow for that. So let's code. We have the IK system we used last week. We'll add a new method, reach XY. Now we just saw that the first phase of reaching is exactly the same as dragging. So we'll just add a call to drag XY. This will drag the last arm and cascade up the parent chain until it hits the first arm. When that's done, we need to correct it all so that it sits on the base. If you remember back to the forward kinematic system, we had an update method that did just that. So I'll throw a call to that in here, and then I'll paste that method in from that other file. Now this has some stuff about phase in here, which we won't be using, so I'll delete those lines. To recap, this runs through the arms array, and if an arm has a parent, it places it at the end X and end Y of that parent. If not, it places that arm at the system XY. You might have noticed that we now have some somewhat duplicated code here and in the add R method. So feel free to refactor to clean that up. Now we can use this new method. Back in the main file where we left off last time, I'll go back to making three 100 pixel long segments. And instead of calling drag, I'll call reach here. Yep, that's it. And here we have an reaching IK arm. Notice that when I go out of range, it stretches out to try to reach me, and when I move in, it bends around just right to arrange itself so it's touching the mouse. Almost intelligent looking. Remember that earlier I said that the system isn't perfect on the first iteration. It's hard to notice it all the time, but sometimes if you move the mouse too quickly and stop, you see that the system stops quite a few pixels away from the target, like there. Again, this will self-correct if allowed to iterate. But because we're only calling reach when the mouse moves, it doesn't get a chance to correct itself after we stop the mouse. So what I'll do is create a mouse x and mouse y variable and initialize them to whatever, zero. Then in the mouse move handler, I'll set those to the current event client x and client y. Then I'll move the reach line down into the update function, which runs continuously and I'll have it reach to mouse X and Y. This lets the code continuously run, and it will always eventually reach the target if it can. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's play with it a bit. I'm going to change this to have three segments of different lengths, 240, 180, and 120. And I'll change the name to IKS1. Now I'm going to move it down to a position of say 250 on X and height, which will put the base at the bottom of the canvas. Then I'm going to duplicate this and rename the new one IKS2. I'll put this one at an X of width minus 250 and a Y of height. In an update, I'll call reach and render on both of the new arms. Now I have two arms reaching for the mouse. Let's see how that looks. Pretty cool. These things seem almost alive and eerily curious.
Let's take it another step. I'm going to paste some code in here. This creates a ball object with some basic physics. This is all stuff that's covered in earlier episodes, so I'm not going to go into it in detail. It has an update and a render method. So an update I'll call ball update and ball render passing in the context. Now when the call is to reach, I'll pass in ball x and ball y. And I'll comment out this mouse move code. Now both arms will reach toward that moving object. And it seems we have two autonomous robot arms playing catch with a ball. Amazing. In fact, they're not actually interacting with the ball. Although it looks like they're catching it and throwing it sometimes, they're really just following it around. However, it wouldn't be a stretch to do some circle line collision detection with the ball and the IK system's last arm, end X and Y, and have them bump the ball in a new direction when they hit it. I'll leave that to you to try out. Have fun with it.